This is a small town called Lawtonville. Perhaps it doesn't look familiar from the air, but if you've ever driven from New York to Los Angeles, or vice versa, you've passed through it. Still don't remember? Well, this one has a city hall built of red brick in 1906, and it's been repainted a light brown every year since 1915. Still don't remember Lawtonville? Well, it has a school, and like most small town schools, the children have a tremendous respect for laws and rules. Hiya, Rusty. Hiya, fellas. Why'd you take so long? Nah, Hopo kept me after class. Apple polisher? Apple polisher, nothing. He lectured me. That composition you wrote about your dad? Yeah. It wasn't any of Hopo's business. You better not let your dad see that composition. Well, I don't care if he does. He can't tell me. Gee, I'm gonna do just what I want. Hey, that's what you said. And just when I want to do it, too. You sure talk big for such a little fella. And you're not so big yourself. And I talk small, too. You really tell your pop that stuff? Sure. My old man would wail the daylights out of me if I said that. Like you were still a kid. Yeah, that's right. Gee, a guy's folks just won't admit the kids are grown up. Must have something to do with mothers and fathers wanting to stay young. That's the main thing with mothers and fathers. Well, they don't have to take it out on us kids. Always telling a fellow what to do and where to go. Yeah, and what to be. Yeah, just like I said. Well, so long. Come on, Rusty. I thought we were going to play a game. Well, uh, I can't. Why not? Well, I, I have to pick up my pup suit at the cleaners. Okay, Mr. Hotshot, you and your big talk. You can't tell me. Toss it. Anybody home? I'm here in the kitchen. Hello, honey. Hi. And what kind of a day did Lawtonville's best city attorney have? Lawtonville's only city attorney. Had a legal matter that Blackstone never anticipated. Oh, like what? Jimmy Donato owns that fruit stand on Church Street. Mm -hmm. And it seems that uh, he's been giving Patrolman Johnson a free apple every day for over two years. Oh, how very nice of Mr. Donato. But yesterday, Patrolman Johnson gave Mr. Donato a ticket for parking overtime. So, Mr. Donato is trying to sue the police department. He wants to be reimbursed for 764 apples. <laughs> What's for dinner? Goulash. Danny's favorite. Did he pick up my suit? I don't think so. He just got home from school a few minutes ago. He knew I needed it. That he did. This sort of thing has been happening quite a lot lately. Mm -hmm, it certainly has. I think I'll have a few thousand well-chosen words with your son. Now he's my son. Hello, son. Hi. You must have had a busy day. I hear you got in just before I did. Yeah, I, we played kind of late. Well, stop reading when I'm talking to you. Okay. Pick up my suit? Nah, I forgot. You knew I wanted it. Well, I had to finish the game, didn't I? Danny, I don't want to argue with you. Picking up my suit was a simple favor to ask. Why didn't you do it? Well, because you're always telling me things to do. Oh? It's Danny, do this. Danny, don't go out. Danny, go out. Danny, eat. You and Mom all the time. But that's what parents are for, son, to advise their children. Well, I don't need advice. Ah, oh, we all do. We never stop needing it. Ever hear the story of Mark Twain and his father? No. Well, when Mark was 10 years old, he thought his father was pretty dumb. But when he was 20, his father seemed very bright. And he was surprised to find out how much his old man had learned in such a short time. 
Uh, I guess you're a lot closer to 10 than you are to 20. There you go, always treat me like a kid. When you act like one. Well, I'm not. Neither am I. But your mother advises me often. Well, I got a mind of my own. So have I. Taking advice doesn't imply loss of self. Well, I don't need your advice. What if we demand you take our advice? I'll leave home. Yep, that's what I'll do. Great idea. Make a man of you. You hear that, Ethel? Danny's going to leave home. Do him a world of good. Huh? Now, let's see. You're, uh, uh, 13. Mm -hmm. I was a year younger when I got the idea. You'll want some money. My folks gave me 50 cents, but because of the high cost of living, here, take a dollar. Now then, you'll need a few things. Let's help him pack. Come on, Ethel, help him pack. I'll get the bag. I'm going to get a few things for him. Ah, that's the idea. Now, let's see. We don't want to take too much. Travel light. The lighter you travel, the further you go, I always say. There we are. No, you don't want that sport coat. That's too flimsy. Want good, heavy, strong clothes, like those denims. That's the idea, and that sweater. Uh, winter's coming on. Don't you think you better take these rubbers? Yeah, that's right. Uh, here we are. Ah, this is just what you need. Danny, get that up. Up on your feet, my boy. There you are. Now, have fun. Have fun. All work and no play is no good, you know, my wife. There you are, son. You're on your way. Now, drop us a line if you get a chance, and if there are any foreign stamps on the envelopes, I'll paste them in your catalog. Now, honey, you take good care of yourself. I'm sorry you can't stay for dinner. We're having goulash. Oh, well, he'll travel better on an empty stomach. There you are. So long, son. Bye-bye now. Goulash? Hello, Danny. Hi. Hey, how about some goulash? Oh, golly, yes. But I won't enjoy it. Hi, fellas. Hi, Danny. Hi. Gee, Saturday morning sure goes fast. What's to do? How about a horse wrestle? Okay, I take you. You ride. There's no cat up in that tree. Gee, sounds like somebody moved into the Jones's house. Hello? Yes? Why'd you slam the windows? Nobody's lived here for a long time, so when I heard you play... And you have bad manners. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I'm sorry. I was practicing. Well, okay. What's your name? Danny. Danny Mitchell. What's yours? Penny Waters. Penny? Yes? Oh, I wasn't asking anything. I was just saying your name. I've never heard anyone call that before. What's wrong with it? Oh, nothing. I like it. It's nice. Do you go to school around here? Sure. I've never seen you there. Well, Miss Davis... From the school board? She talked to me. Would you like to come in? Well, if I can bring my dog... Your dog? Well, uh, wouldn't he rather play outside? Rusty's always with me. All right, but make him stay in the corner. Go on, Rusty. Go and sit in the corner. Gee, this is nice. Uh, would you like me to play something? Sure, anything. Gee, that's pretty. 
do you live with your... Just my mother. You play swell. Thank you. No mistakes, either. Do you take lessons? I... I used to. I did, too. From Professor Harold. He's awful. He'd always keep telling me, Now, don't look at the hands. Head up, please. Don't look at the hands. But you play without looking at your hands at all. What's wrong? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. When you studied as long as I have, you won't look at your hands either. I'll show you. Do you know any Chopin preludes? Preludes? I guess not. Well, I only had three lessons. Well, how about this? Oh, I had enough lessons for that one. Stop looking at your hands. Started, Mrs. Mungie. Let's get going. Please go on, Miss Davis. Her name is Penny Waters, and she's 13 years old. She lost her sight in an accident about two years ago. Uh, her mother's our assistant librarian. Uh, the main point, Miss Davis, the main point, please. Well, they've been in town two months, and the girl is not enrolled in school yet. Two months? And the mother hasn't done anything about it? She's tried. She really wants her to go, but... But why? Why not? I suppose the girl is self-conscious, insecure. You can imagine how she feels. You know, there's a state law requiring all children to attend school until they're 16. I thought this case deserved a little more care and understanding. It would be so much better if she could attend the Lawtonville School. The state has institutions for all cases like this. You have a point, but I'm not talking about all cases, Mr. Ainsworth. I'm talking about Penny Waters. I think it would be far better if she could be with sighted children. Outstanding authorities wouldn't agree with you on that notion, Miss Davis. Well, I've been in the field myself for 10 years, Mr. Ainsworth. And I've been in it for 25. Why don't you retire? Besides, we're considering an increase in the teacher's pay. That's all you ever do, consider it. And Penny Waters would involve an investment we're not prepared to make. I say spend it if it means a child's happiness. It's not your money we're spending. Well, it's not your money we're saving. How's that for a 70-year-old woman? Uh, Mr. Chairman, you're quite right. Uh, this Penny Waters belongs in a special school because, for one thing, she couldn't possibly manage her way around the school. Absolutely. If she fell or injured herself on school property... Why, she'd she sue the city. Uh, she'd require a reader, more expense. This is clearly the concern of the state. And what about the girl's feelings? That's exactly what we're thinking of. All those in favor of sending this girl to the state school? Opposed. Passed. Matter referred to the city attorney for action. I'd resign if I didn't know it'd make your life more pleasant. Is Penny in? You're Danny Mitchell. I'm Penny's mother. Won't you come in? Oh, but you'd better leave your dog outside. I'm sure he's a fine dog, but Penny's uncomfortable around things she doesn't know. Well, she talked to me. Oh, yes, Danny, she talked to you and could hear you. You see, that makes a difference. Who is it, Mother? It's Danny. And Rusty. Come on in, Danny. Bring Rusty with you. Make yourself at home, Danny. I bet you didn't expect me back so soon. I hoped it'd be soon. I don't know many people here. Well, you could know a lot more. I mean, I have friends. No, I don't like lots of people here. Oh. Oh. oh, gosh, don't be afraid. He just gave you your handkerchief. Oh, he is a nice dog. His coat feels so nice and soft. Where'd you live before? Carmel. Carmel? California on the Pacific Ocean. Gee, the Pacific. I'd really like to see it. It is pretty. Emerald green in some spots. And in other parts, it's blue. A real deep blue. And the ocean comes into little bays and quiet. No one's around, no one. Just the sound of the water and the seagulls. Gosh, that sounds great. Why'd you ever leave? I wanted to. Oh, but, well, that was your home. And your mom worked there and everything. You wouldn't understand. 
Yes, I would. Well, it was kind of... I mean, I went to school there. And I knew they all pitied me and felt sorry for me. Why would anyone want to do that? They wanted to help me. And didn't think I could do anything myself. But I saw you. you... Carmel was pretty once. We read about California in school, but, well, it isn't the same as really being there. You don't have to be in a place to like it. You can pretend, and it's just as real and just as beautiful. Yeah, I do that sometimes, too. Everybody does. Everybody pretends to be something they're not. Or maybe won't ever be. I guess we'd call them daydreams, but... Well, people would laugh if you told them. That's because they don't want to understand. Sometimes I pretend I travel, that I'm successful. Successful? That I'm a concert pianist, the greatest concert pianist in the world. And I sit on the biggest, brightest stages in Mexico City and London and Paris and New York. All those people, they don't come just to hear me. Those thousands and thousands of people come to see me, Danny. They come to see me and look at me. That's what'll happen when I'm a concert pianist. When I'm famous. Mrs. Waters is here to see you. Oh, yes. Mrs. Waters? Sorry to take you from your lunch hour, Mrs. Waters. Oh, I don't mind at all. It's rather difficult. But I wanted to talk to you about your daughter, Penny. My daughter? But why should the city attorney be concerned with my daughter? You know that line about sending things through channels? Well, I'm a channel. <laughs> I still don't understand. But it seems the school board had it brought to its attention. With Davis. The social welfare worker. Yes, she's very nice. With her help, I've almost convinced Penny to attend the Lawtonville School. Well, I'm afraid this has nothing to do with the Lawtonville School. Nothing to do with... Evidently, Miss Davis took it upon herself to make that suggestion. But you just told me that... It doesn't eliminate the state school for no. the... No. No, she can't. Mrs. Waters, have you considered a private tutor for Penny? Of course. But on the salary I get, that's impossible. Oh. Of course, as city attorney, I could give you the time-worn phrase about, it's the law. But I realize in this case it's more than the law. It's a life. Then how can you? Under the circumstances, don't you think the board's decision is best? You say that so easily, Mr. Mitchell. But your daughter must get some kind of education. It's the only way she can achieve any degree of independence. She has me. Unfortunately, that's not enough. It takes a formal education. And now is the time to train her and teach her. I don't know. I'm terribly confused. I'd like you to sign this paper giving your assent. She'd never forgive me. I'm the only one she trusts. Mrs. Waters, think it over for a few days. It can wait that long. Penny! I'm out in the backyard, Danny! Come on, Rusty. Hiya, Penny. I came right from school. From school? I bought some hot dogs and I thought we'd go on a picnic. You know, hot dogs taste better than anything else on picnics. And at baseball games. And football games, too. Well, just about anywhere, I guess. So what's the matter? Remember I told you the other day about me being a concert pianist? I didn't mean it, Danny. I didn't mean it at all. Well, that's what we were talking about, pretending and not meaning it. Well, I just want to be by myself. You mean I'm... Not you, Danny. It's... Well, they want me to go to school. Hey, that's swell. I'll call for you every morning and then we'll... Not your school, Danny. They want to send me to another kind. Another kind? A kind for... People like me, that kind. Oh. 
who are they? The Board of Education, my mother said. They gave her a paper to sign, but she wouldn't. Why can't they all just let me alone, Danny? Why can't they all just let me alone? When is it going to happen? A few days. Oh, but, but don't you want to come to our school? No, it'd be just like Carmel. Oh, no, it wouldn't. We have a swell bunch. There's a candy store across the street where we get Cokes, and, and in the schoolyard we play games No, like... I couldn't. I don't want any of it. I just want to stay here. Oh, but... Hey, what about our picnic? Not even that. I know this place, Danny. I know where the walk and the lawn are, and the swing and the chairs and the door. And they know me. They're friends, and... There are friends out there, too. Nothing's out there. Oh, you're wrong, Penny. There are flowers. You can smell them when you go into the fields. And trees. And a stream where the guys go to. Only they won't be there now. Well, no, I can't, Danny. Please, Penny. It's easy. Gosh, I spend 45 cents on these hot dogs. But I've never been further than... Oh, Rusty will be with us. He doesn't like everybody, Rusty doesn't. But he likes you. Gee, isn't this a perfect day? It's a better day than it was. It'll be even better. Now, this is the curbstone, and that's the street. Now, you walk along with Penny until you come to the curb. Stay. Now, you lead Penny across the street, if there aren't any cars. Oh, go on. What are you waiting for? Rusty's absolutely right. 48 convertible just came around the corner. <laughs> Hi, Pop. <laughs> Sorry I couldn't make it for dinner, dear. I got it all figured out. Got what figured out? About Penny. Well, you don't know about her, but she's blind and they want to send her away. Penny? Penny who? Penny Waters. Only I figured it out. Come here, sit down, son. I do know about this Penny case. Gee, you can help. I wish I could. But it's up to me to see that she's sent to the state school. You? Well, not directly, but I well, mean... Well, why are you doing it? Because it's part of my job. Well, you don't have to. You're a big shot down there. <laughs> Not that big, son. You see, I'm just the fellow who does the legal work for Lawtonville. Well, now, since you're the one who does the legal work for Lawtonville, I'd like to discuss a legality matter with you. <clears throat> well, it's after office hours, but uh, you're a friend of the family. I Yes, it'll be all right. Go ahead. Why won't they let Penny go to our school? Why not? Well, it might be inconvenient for her. Find her way around. She might hurt herself. What if she had someone to help? Whom do you have in mind? Rusty. I read about dogs that guide people who are blind. Now, Rusty would be... No, I'm afraid that's impossible, son. See, it'll take several months of special training, and Rusty's too old for it. Oh. I'm sorry. But what if she had a real dog, one that was trained? It'd be a good idea for Penny, but I don't know if the Board of Education... Well, you can make them. You have the law on your side. No, oh, so do they. Besides, you haven't talked to Penny about it. She may not even want one. I'll go and ask her right now. And tomorrow. It's after 10. Well, but why not? Tomorrow is plenty of time. Good night, Mom. Good night, Danny. Father? <laughs> Good night, son. Well, I guess I'll turn in, too. Hugh, you're a heel. Thank you, dear. What'd I do now? Why do you make it so difficult for Danny? Well, there's very little more I can do. The papers go through tomorrow. Well, there must be something you can do. Well, I did manage to get a postponement. That is no solution. Of course, if I could get the board to reconsider... You could. First thing tomorrow morning. Now. No, it's quarter after ten. Now. But I... Now. Yes, dear. <clears throat> I don't care if you are tired. We of Lawtonville have always concerned ourselves with the problems of the individual. Why stop now? Right! Shh! I think it's wonderful him saying things like that. This isn't even an election year. Don't you ever sleep? Too old to sleep. Can't spare the time. Might miss something. But in the case of Petty Waters... Hugh, I warn you, this is a matter exclusively for the Board of Education. We made our decision. And I think you decided improperly. Right. That's what I always say. Well, I don't always say that. Penny Waters couldn't manage her way about our school. We did what was best. You did what was easiest and called it best. The guide dog is best. Well, I'm for it. So am I. But if the guide dog failed, we'd be right back to where we started. And that'd make you very happy. Besides, we have rules. Dogs are not allowed on the school grounds. 
The school board made that rule, and the school board can change it. Oh, please, just give it a chance. Well, I don't know. Harry Ainsworth, for an intelligent man, you're not a very intelligent man. And furthermore... All right, all right, we'll try it. Good boy. But if it doesn't work out, Penny Waters goes to the state school. Oh, of all... Meeting adjourned. Oh. Good night, I'm going home. Good night. Uh, good night. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Now, why are you so mysterious? I'll tell you when we get down to the street. Stop teasing. But it's a present, a surprise. I won't walk another step till you tell me. Well, okay. It's all set. What is? You can go to school. Oh. Oh, I don't mean the state school. I mean our school. They had a meeting and my pop told them off. All you have to do is get one of those dogs that'll take you around. My mother told me about that. Well, then it's all set. No, Danny. I can't. Let's go back. What do you mean, you you can't? I thought it was a real present. But now you'll be able to do whatever you want. Nothing will ever let me do that. I'm not like others. That's what you thought the first time we went for a walk. Remember? The very first time. That was different. All it takes is a guide dog, and then you'll be able to go to school and, and, and go to shows. You'll be able to go wherever you want to. It'll make everything just... just... as bad. Danny, I know what's best for me. But... Listen, a J. Where? Over there. Golly, you're right. Gee, you can hear things better than I can. And I, bet you, and I bet you can do lots of things better than I can. Don't start that again, Danny. But, Penny, I only want to help. Help is like feeling sorry for me. No, it isn't. I don't like your present. I don't think it's a present at all. But if you don't use it, they'll send you to Let the... them. Just proves what I said. And I want to go home. Please. And you talked to Penny about it? All last evening. I thought your son could help, but you refused him too. Well, I'm afraid there's no alternative then. Can't I keep her? Can't I just... I must say it now, Mrs. Waters. It's the law, and it's out of my hands. Yes, I guess so. But any time Penny will take the dog... Oh, I've tried every way I know. What's stopping her? Well, ever since the accident, it's just that I can't get Penny to undertake anything on her own. From all I've heard, she's done quite a lot already. Well, not by herself, not independently. And the guide dog... The guide dog would mean complete self-sufficiency. Yes. And the thought that if she failed... The state school is probably the most practical way now. It's the most practical. Danny! Here I am. Hi, Dad. Oh, Danny. Mrs. Waters just signed the paper. Sign? Yes, to let Penny go. She thought it was the most practical thing to do. Dad. Yes, Danny. I guess you were right. About what? That we all need advice. What are we going to do now? Well, as city attorney, I must advise you to give up the whole thing. Oh, that's swell. I ask you to help me out and all you can say is... But, as your father, I'd say there's no law to keep you from trying again. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right, honey. Yes, it will. There'll be lots of new people and... <laughs> I'll go finish packing. Rusty. Here, boy. Let you and I go for our last walk. Oh, 
trust he'd get here. He always comes when you're in school. You can have him back. Oh, no, no. I didn't mean that. Going for a walk? Down to the stream? I don't care. Rusty. He tried to catch a frog that jumped into the stream. He fell in the water. <laughs> I'll be leaving soon. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to state school. Well, you have to if you won't go here. Danny, promise not to let anybody know, and I'll tell you a secret. I promise. I am going away, but with my mother, we're leaving. You and your mother? I made her quit her job and take me away. Quit her job? You promised not to tell. Well, golly. I don't know much about this stuff, but can she just go anywhere and get a library job? I don't care. You're selfish. What? Selfish. You make your mom do this and do that. Always you. Golly, don't you ever think about her? Selfish. She really wanted you to take the guide dog. I never thought about her. I've never seen your mom laugh or even smile. Ever. Well, what if it didn't work out? It then what? It will work out. It can't miss. But don't you see, Danny, if I failed? You can't. Look how Rusty took to you. Won't it make me seem helpless? That's just what you won't be. Nobody will have to help you then. With your own dog, you can go wherever you want. Wherever you want. Danny, I'll try. But, uh... In your letter, you didn't tell us that she was only 13 years old. What difference does that make? Well, a great deal. If a person lacks the physical and emotional maturity to handle a dog, well, under those circumstances, Mrs. Waters, the dog just becomes confused and useless. But she has handled one. Has had one. Oh, but you didn't. No, not had one. Just handled one. Wait a minute. Penny? This is Miss Adams, the chief trainer. Hello, Penny. And Mr. Coleman, the head of the school. Hello, Penny. We're very happy to have you with us, Penny. Come in. Still not unpacked? The other students are waiting downstairs. I didn't know where to put my clothes. I offered to help you this time. I thought I could do it myself, and you acted as if you wanted me to. I did. I've never put my things away before. And, and it's time you started, Penny. Only children, small children, have to have things like that done for them, and you're grown up now. When do I get my dog? In a few days. Wonderful. But there are a few things you must do first. Do first? Oh, learn how to order your dog by hand signals, voice commands. That'll be fun. And how to put away your own things. The Bureau is just ahead of you. Where should I put my blouses? That's for you to decide, Penny. And my skirts will go in the bottom drawer.
Would you mind bringing in Penny Waters? Tubby, sit. How does your class look, Louise? Fine. Including Penny? Including Penny. But? No buts. She's doing very well. You're giving her Tubby? Mm-hmm, today. He's gentler and more patient than the others. And almost a pet of yours. All the dogs I train are almost pets. Hello, Penny. Oh, Mr. Coleman. Are you excited, dear? Yes. <laughs> Just sit right down here, dear. Well, I'll leave you two to your work. See you later, Louise. See you later. Well, Penny, this is the big day. What's my dog like? His name is Tubby. Tubby. He has a firm, strong head. Broad, powerful shoulders. You can always depend on him, Penny. And he has a cute little tail. Just a nub. His coat is reddish brown. You two look very good together. Pet him. Remember that dogs are like people. They respond best to love and affection. He's beautiful. Do you think he likes me? If he's sure you like him. Oh, I do. I do. Good. I have to give the other students their dogs. just got excited. He thought I was going out. And I've been the only one he's worked with until now. He pulled away. But it's just a few minutes since you met each other. Take the leash, honey. We're keeping the others waiting, Penny. Tappy! It's Louise Penny. You didn't come to dinner, and I was worried. I wasn't hungry. Don't you feel well? I'm all right. Is it what happened today? Tubby does like you, but maybe he doesn't love you yet. There's a great difference, you know. You're wise enough to understand what I'm going to say. It's your job to win Tubby over, to make him want to love you. How can I do that? It takes time. But by just being yourself, Loving him. Letting Tubby know you need him. Well, doesn't he know that? He must know it. Penny, you're doing excellently so far. But you'll only be successful if you want to be. You don't have to say anything. Good night, dear. Get the mail, Rusty. Hello, Rusty. Here's a magazine, a package. A letter. And here's a piece of candy. Where's the mail, Rusty? Oh, I'll get it myself. Hey, I wonder what's in the package. Here's a letter from Penny. Hello, Danny. I've had Tubby for a few weeks now. He's my dog, and he always stays with me. He's beautiful, Danny. But the others are nice, too. They say some of them are like Rusty, only not so big. And then there's one that's all black. German Shepherds, they're called. That's the kind of dog they use a lot. And Boxers, too, like mine. All the dogs get real good care. Miss Adams sees their coats are brushed and combed, just like people. And they have a dentist, a real dentist, to take care of the dog's teeth. 
They don't like it at all. Just like people, too. But it's good for them. The dogs get all that care so they'll be healthy and learn how to guide. It's what Miss Adams says, that only healthy dogs learn how to go through the obstacle course and everything. The obstacle course is one of the first places the dogs start training. Weeks and weeks before we ever get them. Miss Adams says that it has to be done that way. And she must know, because she's the one who sees that all the dogs are trained just so. She even trained Tubby, my dog. Our day starts very early here. As a matter of fact, it's 6.30 in the morning. That's when I take Tubby out for an airing before breakfast. He's very gentle, just like Rusty. At 8.30, we have class with the other students. There are two men and a lady in my class, and they came from all different parts of the United States. When my turn comes, I give Tubby his obedience exercises. If I should drop anything, he doesn't pick it up right away. He waits for me to say fetch, and then he goes to get it and brings it back to me. He doesn't let go of the thing he picked up until I say drop. And Danny, soon I'll be able to go wherever I want to, I hope. Because twice a day we go for a walk in town with one or two of the other students, and it's lots of fun. Miss Adams follows just a little bit in back of us. You know, I always thought that when dogs stopped at street corners, they could read traffic signals. But that's silly. They just wait for the cars to stop, and then they know it's safe to go. Even though we walk together, Miss Adams likes us to cross by ourselves. She tells us to go one at a time. A few days ago, we were all walking very nicely on one of the sidewalks when our dog stopped. Miss Adams said that's because some people were moving and there was lots of furniture on the sidewalk. Tubby knew I couldn't get through all of it, so he led me out into the street. At first, I was worried, but Miss Adams told us they were just leading us around the big moving truck. You see, our dogs could go past the furniture, but they knew we couldn't. And yesterday was real exciting because I went out just with Miss Adams. No other students, but I guess I was too excited. I gave Tubby the wrong signal and got all mixed up. Miss Adams had to help me out. She says I'm doing very good, but I'm not. I wish my mother could come up on Sunday, only I guess it's too long a trip. Anyway, I'll be home soon. Your friend, Penny. She says I'm doing very good, but I'm not. And I really like it here. Everyone's so nice. I'm so glad, Penny. Your last letter sounded kind of blue. I was a little. That's because I've been away from home for three weeks. Oh, Miss Adams, this is Mrs. Mitchell. How do you do? How do you Hello, Miss Adams. Hello, Mrs. Waters. Your daughter's coming along beautifully. Yes, I can tell that from her letters. Would you like to see the school? Oh, yes, thank oh, you. Oh, I'd love to. Coming, Penny? No, I thought we'd just sit, Danny and I. <laughs> I guess you have been over the grounds enough. Mm -hmm. Tubby isn't very friendly. No, he isn't. That's because he's only interested in you. Yes. Tubby isn't really my dog. What do you mean? Miss Adams trained him, and he belongs to her. Well, that isn't true. It is true. Well, well, he walks with you, he stays with you. Because he's trained to do that. But he wouldn't stay if he didn't want to. He has to, that's why. Penny, what are you worried about? Nothing. Honest? Tubby! He just ran after Rusty. He's not supposed to. He should stay with me. See, Danny, that's what I meant. Stop them from playing. Gee, you're kind of upset, Penny. It just isn't turning out right. I knew what was best for me, Danny. I knew all the time. It'll be okay. Will it? Well, it has to. Why? Well, you should see how happy your mom's been. She has? Her face kind of all lights up when she talks about you getting the dog and coming home. Yes, I will be home soon. Tubby got away, Penny. I saw him playing outside. 
But I guess he's entitled to it. Tomorrow's the big day. What happens tomorrow? Tubby and Patty are going to walk in traffic alone. The solo flight. Boy, that's swell. Darling, isn't that wonderful? You'll be home soon and everything will be just the way you want it. Did you want to ask me something? The other students have left already. Did you forget your route? No. Well, what then? You said to trust Tubby all the time. When you're uncertain, yes. But he could make a mistake. He won't, Penny, unless you confuse him. Tubby, forward. It's all right, it's Louise, honey. 
<laughs> Tommy hates me. He hates me. No, he doesn't. He's yours, really yours. I, I want to go home. I want to go home. <laughs> Way. Uh, do you think putting Tubby in the car with Penny will do any good? It's worth the try. Anything is. <laughs> and she's really won. Only I can't convince Penny that Tubby stayed with her. Something like this was bound to happen. She approached the whole thing as though it was some magic that would automatically solve her whole problem. No, not magic. Just a sort of wishful hope for the future. Mr. Coleman and you too, Miss Adams, for everything you've done. It wasn't as much as it could have been. Penny, don't you want Tubby? said you wanted to see me, Pa. Yes, Danny. Come on, Rusty. I have some news. News? It's about Penny. She's home. Hey, that's great. Well, it isn't so great, Danny. You see, well, Penny, it... It uh, didn't work out, huh? That's about it, son. Well, everything... Everything looked like it was going okay. Well, kind of. Kind of. Yeah, that's just it. Well, that's over. We've got to think of something else. You mean, should we send away now? Oh, that is it. Penny was right. She was right all the time. She knew what was best. Well, that isn't true. It is, and I had to go and give her advice. Well, it just goes to prove well, it. It proves nothing. It does, too. It does. It proves a guy knows what's best for him. You don't understand. Danny, come back here. Danny! I'm gonna go and see Penny. Come on, Rusty. Do you like talking? Not now, Danny. Yes, sir. Go up. I'll get the water. We won't get back to school until pretty late. Don't you think we'd better call them? Uh, well, you do it. The phone's right over there. Tubby! Tubby, come back here! Tubby!
you ran off and left us. It's just the way Tubby left me. From the first, he never liked me, just her. Rusty! Rusty! I'll sure give him a licking when he gets back. Maybe it was sort of my fault, too. You mean Rusty? No, Tubby. But it wasn't. It was his fault. I shouldn't have asked you to get a guide dog. I knew it was wrong. I told you, Danny. Yeah. And I was right all the time. <laughs> away from them to come to you. Oh, Tubby! Tubby, you're mine! You'll love me! Tubby! Tubby! Now you can go to school like us and stay here. Aren't you glad I said you should go? Of course, Danny. Uh, Tubby, you mind? I guess we all need help sometimes. Oh, Tubby, you're mine. And, and that does mean a... A loss of self. <laughs> I never heard you talk like that before, Danny. Oh, I sure don't. That's the way my pop talks. Smart guy, my pop. I have Tubby now. And everything. And everything. <laughs> Tubby, forward. Forward. 